All right, now that we've learned how Let It Ride Poker works, how would we actually code this? Well, remember the demonstration that we did in class where I uh, showed the shuffle algorithm? I've uh, laid out a chart here representing the first few elements in my array here. So this represents a deck. Remember, deck is a class that we created. So if I create a new object in that class called my cards, then essentially we would have this deck right here. In the game of Let It Ride Poker, notice that we only ever needed five cards. So the way that I've uh, set it up for my game in the code that I wrote is basically you shuffle your deck using that shuffle algorithm that you uh, had inside of the deck class. And whenever you're done shuffling your cards, then they should be in a fairly random order here. So let's just call this random order of cards. And the only thing we're going to need to play our game of Let It Ride Poker is the first five cards, because as we know in Let It Ride, the dealer shows you three cards, then you make a decision, do you pull, do you let it ride? Then the dealer shows you the next card, you decide, do you want to let it ride, or do you want to pull it bet back? And then the dealer shows you the next card. And the fact that we have another card and another card and a we'll whole lot more cards in our deck is irrelevant. The only thing we need are elements 0 through 4 in our array, representing the first five cards. So I'm just going to pull these off because who cares? We don't, we don't need to know what's happening later on in the deck. All we need to know is what's in position 0 through 4 for our hand of cards here. Every time we play a new hand of Let It Ride, we'll reshuffle the deck and we only need to look at the first five elements, zero through four, in our array in order to play the game. The hard part for your code would be after you have these five cards revealed, your program needs to be able to determine whether or not this is a winning hand. It's pretty easy for us to just look at these cards and know that this hand does not represent a winning hand. There's no straights, pairs, flushes, there's nothing, nothing of interest here. But let's look at these five cards right here. We can tell just by quickly looking at this that we do qualify for a payout. We have tens or better. We have a pair of jacks here, so this would qualify us for a one-to-one -one payout. But how do we have our algorithm recognize that this is, in fact, the best payout? In fact, our algorithm might get confused by the fact that our pair aren't next to each other, or potentially, what if this right here, there was a jack right there, then how would it not see this as a pair, but actually recognize that we have three of a kind? So there's a whole lot of things we need to consider whenever we're trying to determine what the best hand is on the table so that we can get the maximum payoff. I know if I was the player, I would be pretty upset if this was my hand, but rather than getting paid for three of a kind, I got paid just for a pair of jacks. It's pretty easy for us to take a look at these five cards and know that we have two pair. We have a pair of aces and we have a pair of nines. But writing a comp set of comparison statements for the computer to know, looking at these five cards, that you have two pair and that is the best hand that you have, it's actually trickier than you might think. Uh, and so when I was ta tackling writing this algorithm, I thought uh, probably the best way to deal with this would be, let's go ahead and put the cards in order from least to greatest. That will reduce the number of comparisons that we need to make, um, because we can assume that, uh, that pairs will be neighbored next to each other and that straights will actually follow a sequential order. Uh, so it'll make comparisons a whole lot easier later on if we just sort these five cards. Keep in mind though that these five cards just represent positions zero through four in our deck of cards and we actually have a bunch of other cards after here. We have a fifth card, we have uh, or a sixth card and a seventh card here in position five and six and it keeps going all the way to all 52 cards, but what we want to sort are just the first five cards. So we want our sorting algorithm to stop after we sorted these cards. We don't actually want to bring any of these other cards into the mix. We want to keep them out of the way. We don't want to pull them into our hand. 
So after the player has been shown all of their five cards, and uh, they've had all of their possible options uh, to pull or let it ride, then we're trying to figure out what is the best possible hand that they have. And in order to do that, I recommend we, start, uh, we started off with a sort. So that's why I gave you the algorithm for a bubble sort, but I'm going to kind of walk you through how a bubble sort works. First thing we do in a bubble sort is we set up a Boolean flag. So I'm going to create a variable over here called swap flag. And I'm going to set it equal to false. I'm going to use a poker chip here just to represent its current value right now. So swap flag is set to false right now. So basically in a bubble sort we're going to use a for loop to scan through our cards here. Just cards 0 through 4 is all we want to look at. We don't want our for loop to go too far down here and start grabbing cards from uh, later on in the deck. So I'm going to use this chip to represent where we currently are with our for loop. So here we are at element 0 in our for loop. The first thing that we do is we compare this element to this one right here. So uh, in, in our index 0 here we have a card with a value of 1 and we look at its nearest next neighbor. This card right here has a value of 9. Are these currently in order from least to greatest? 1 is less than 9, so yes they are. I know that sometimes, uh, or most of the time, ace is high in poker, but we've given it a value of 1, and so we can handle that later on in our comparison. So let's just keep it at 1 right now. So ace is less than 9, so those are in order from least to greatest. So no swap is necessary. Nothing needs to take place. Let's move our chip over. Now let's compare this card right here, which has a value of 9, to this card right here, which has a value of 1. This is not in order from least to greatest. 9 is higher than 1. So in this case, we know that our array is not currently in order. So we need to swap these two cards right now. In our deck class, we already wrote a method for handling swapping of two cards. Uh, it actually involves a temporary storage location where you take this card, you store it in temporary storage, move this one over, move this one over here. But just for brevity today, I'm just going to say you're going to run your swap cards method just to switch these two cards so that this is your end result. Now whenever we first swap some cards here, we need to now acknowledge that we have swapped cards by setting our swap flag to true. So since we had to make a swap, let's set that as true. And now we can move on to our next comparison. So now here we're at element 2. Let's compare our 9 to our king. Is this currently in order from least to greatest? Yes it is. No swap is necessary here. So then we can move our chip over here. Now let's compare this card and this card. King, which has a numerical value of 13, is not smaller than our 9 here. So another swap is necessary. So I'm going to run my swap cards method from the deck class. These two cards swap places. Again, at this point, because I've done a swap, I would set my swap flag to true, but it's already true. so. Nothing needs to happen there, but because I did a swap, I would set that to true. Now, here's where you want to be careful. You don't want your for loop to move over here again, because what this would do is you would compare your card in this position to the card over here in this position, which you don't want to do because these cards are basically being ignored right now. So you want your for loop to only run from position 0 to position 3. Never let your for loop go over here in position 4 where it does a comparison between this card and this card. So we've reached the end of our for loop and we can see that our cards are shuffled right now or they are sorted in the correct order right now but our algorithm doesn't yet know that because we've set our swap flag to true so we haven't yet had a successful pass where we've moved all the way through and identified that everything is in the perfect order. All we know is that we've done some swaps. Maybe it's in the right order and maybe it's not. So what we need to do now is we set our swap flag back to false. And let's go through the process again. Start the for loop here. Let's do a comparison. This one to this one. They do not need to swap. 
Looking at these two, there is nothing that needs to swap. Look over here, nothing needs to swap. Look at this, nothing needs to swap. And that's where our for loop ends there at position three. So we made it all the way through and our swap flag never got triggered. It never flipped over to true, meaning we got it all the way through this for loop without ever having to swap anything, which means we know for sure our five set of cards here are currently in order. Sometimes it may take several passes in order to get your cards in the correct order. Say for example, if we started off with our cards like this, then here's what the bubble sort might look like. We start here, do a comparison, those are fine. Compare those, that needs to swap. Set our swap flag to true. Now let's compare these, they need to swap. Set our swap flag to true, it already is. Compare these, those need to swap. Set our swap flag to true, it already is. Our for loop has ended, we need to, we have a true right here, so we need to make another pass. Let's initialize this to false, and let's compare again. These are okay, don't need to swap. Those are okay, don't need to swap. These are not okay, they need to swap. So we swap it, flag becomes true. Compare these, they're okay. Our swap flag was true, so we know a swap happened, and we may not be done yet, so let's try it again. Go back to false and start at the beginning. Ace and nine, those are okay. Nine and ace, those need to swap. There we go. Whenever that swap happens, we go to true. Now let's look here. Those don't need to swap. Those don't need to swap. Our for loop is done, but our swap flag got triggered. Something in there swapped, so we know we might not be done yet. We need to make another pass. Set it to false. Try again. Those are okay. Those are okay. Those are okay. Those are okay. We made it all the way through that loop without ever doing a swap, so we know now they are in the correct order.